Hey Canucks fans, it is Canucks game day. Spencer Martin starts, Brock Besser is back, Jack Rathbone will likely draw in, and Jim Rutherford is still talking about systems and structure. I'm Canuck Clay, and this is my Canucks take all in one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Tuesday, November the 8th. If you're new, here's what you should do. Hit the subscribe button now for daily Canucks insight that's positive, timely, and trustworthy. I am back. My big, massive work event is now in my rear view mirror, just like my car has a rear view mirror right now. In fact, the busiest work week, a uh, work month of my entire year is now behind me. So I'm back to doing daily videos, daily live streams starting tonight. Tonight, I have the Steve Dangle Show Game Over Vancouver at the conclusion of Vancouver versus the Senators. So make sure you check me out on SDPN. And then I'll have my own show tonight at 11 p.m. Canucks After Dark with Parker. That will be tomorrow night. Let's talk about Vancouver versus Ottawa. Many lineup changes for the Canucks as they look to, I guess you could say, build on their semi-successful homestand. They went 3-1-1, one, and one, 7 out of 10 points. They could have gone, not 3-1-1, one, one, it wasn't a homestand, sorry. There was a, an away game against Seattle in there. In the last five, the Canucks have gone 3-1-1, one, and one. could have gone 4-1 and one if they didn't give up that victory, uh, that lead against Nashville, but uh, still... 3-1-1 one, one in their last five, and they're going to be facing uh, the young, somewhat middling Ottawa Senators. For the Vancouver Canucks, let's go from the forwards all the way back. The biggest change up front is Brock Besser will return to the lineup after missing, I think it was about three weeks, with his wrist injury or uh, basically the opening of a cut on one of his wrists. So he gets elevated to the top line, and then Pearson joins him because... They're moving Miller back to center now. So instead of Miller being on Horvat's wing, you have our three deep centers once again. So the first, at least the way the lines are listed, you have Miller with the returning Brock Besser and Tanner Pearson. On your second line, you have our best line of Pedersen between the two Russians, Mikheyev and Kuzmenko. Now your third line on paper, Horvat plays with Podkolzin and Garland. I really like that line, actually. And then our fourth line what, uh, between Joshua, Aman, and Studnika, the jazz line, J-A-S, so to speak. So that's our forwards. That means Sheldon Dries and Niels Hoglander will be the extra forwards up front. On D, the way they, they practice, it was OEL with Ethan Bear. I do like that pairing. Hughes and Shen, of course. And then, of course, it's been Stillman and Myers. And I was going to call this video Stillman Still In because it sounded like that Stillman was going to play. But then just before I press record here, um, it sounds like Bruce Boudreaux said there's a really good chance that Rathbone draws in the lineup. Now, to me, the easiest and least disruptive thing is you simply bring in Rathbone for Stillman, who did struggle against Nashville on Saturday night, and you put Jack Rathbone with Tyler, Tyler Myers. I don't think you're bringing in both Rathbone and Burroughs as a pair to replace completely the pair of Stillman and Myers. That would be too big of a jump. And as much as we like the play of Kyle Burroughs, uh, you can't convince me that he's a better a more effective player than Tyler Myers. Well, I guess you could convince me, but I, I don't think that's the way they're going. So if I had to guess, you guys, I think it's going to be OEL and Bear, Hughes with Shen, and then Rathbone with Myers. And that would mean that Stillman and Burroughs would be your extra defenseman. So that's something to, to, uh, to keep an eye on when the Canucks take their pregame skate. Spencer Martin makes his fourth start of the season. He's 2-0-1, you guys. He hasn't lost in regulation yet. Extend that to the six games last year where he didn't lose in regulation. He's gone nine starts for the Canucks without losing in regulation. So you're, you're going to Spencer Martin, and then Thatcher Demko is his backup. So once again, really quickly, and I would love your impression on this lineup. Forwards, defense, and of course the starting goaltender. Up front, it's Miller, Besser, Pearson, Pedersen, Mikheyev, Kuzmenko, Horvat, Pakos, and Garland, and Aman, Joshua, and Studnika. I don't know how loud it is because I put the window down. It's so nice out today. And then uh, on D, I think it's going to be O.L. Bear, Hughes, Shen, Rathbone, Myers, and then Spencer Martin starts in goal. So tell me what you think about that lineup and tell me, uh, give me your score prediction. I haven't gotten it right yet, so I'm going Canucks 4-2. And I'm going to say Kuzmenko scores the first goal. So 4-2 Canucks with Kuzmenko scoring the first goal. Give me your predictions down below. I want to spend the last couple minutes talking about Jim Rutherford. He was on Sportsnet 650 yesterday talking to Sat Shaw and Dan Riccio, and among many things, his desire to re-sign Horvat and how impressed he's been with Horvat throughout the, the first two months of the season. 
the first month of the season, his, um, his, I guess, hesitancy to use the term rebuild. Instead, he likes to say that their team is always building. He once again talked about uh, the fact that they want to do more, but they're hamstrung by cap problems and contracts. So all that stuff. But I guess the biggest thing that's making a lot of uh, a lot of news today, and even Boudreaux referred to it, referenced it, responded to it this morning, was uh, this repeated notion from Jim Rutherford, the president, that the Canucks don't play with enough structure or they don't have good systems. The two S words, structure and system. And he reiterated that he didn't think they were playing with enough structure or didn't have good systems coming out of training camp, which led to the preseason, a poor preseason, which led to a really poor start to this season. And he he didn't call out the coaches specifically. He didn't call out the players specifically. He said that everyone has to be better and everyone has to be more accountable. But when you're talking about systems and structure, yes, the players have to execute those systems and structure, but that's a coaching thing. Full stop. That's a coaching thing. So when the president of your hockey club is talking about the lack of structure and systems, how can you not get offended if you are the head coach or part of the coaching staff? And Boudreaux basically said, um, oh, it's just another thing that I'm going to put in my book when I write it. He kind of laughed it off that way. But he also said that he really hopes his players prove uh, – who, everybody wrong. He didn't say Rutherford, of course. He's not going to say his own. He did say that, uh, you know, he, he hopes his players prove everyone wrong, that he does speak with Rutherford regularly. That's what Rutherford has said as well. And he also talked about how um, he, he kind of always, Brujo always bristles at, at or, the, or claps back at the suggestion they don't play with enough systems and structure. He basically says, we have the, those things, a system, systems and a structure, and the, the players are doing their best to, to stay within those things. So, um, I, I really, I want to ask you Canucks fans, uh, maybe taking sides is the wrong way of looking at it, but are you okay with Jim Rutherford's honesty and transparency in, in media appearances? My take at first, I was like, yeah, this is good. This is refreshing. Benning barely talked to anyone. It's really good to hear him speaking and speaking his mind and at least letting us uh, a small peek behind the curtain as to what they want to do with the club. But then as I hear him speak more and more, I kind of think that maybe uh, he's, he's already said his piece. I don't think he should keep harping on systems and structure without calling out Boudreaux, but by basically calling out Boudreaux, not calling him out by name. And I'm not sure now what good that's going to do. Just like you, when you don't like to hear a coach rip into a player publicly, I'm not sure I, I, if I'm the most comfortable hearing our president um, unintentionally rip into our head coach and, and his coaching staff. You might think, Clay, you're being a wimp. This is good. We need more of this accountability. But at the fragile state that this team is in, I'm not convinced that it's the best way to go. But Cux fans, I would love your opinion. So give me your opinion on that, on Rutherford um, speaking with loose lips to the media. Give me your score prediction for tonight and give me your prediction for the Canucks goal scorer. And don't forget, game over Vancouver at the end of the game tonight on the Steve Dangle Podcast Network, SDPN channel, and then my own show at 11 o'clock tonight. Thanks to my sponsors, Van City Experts Real Estate, Perform and Transform, Personal Training and Weight Loss. Thank you to legendary Lucas Gates, legendary Justin Credible, legendary Andrew Chang, and to Hall of Fame and franchise members. And thanks to all of you for helping me to continue to grow this channel. As always, subscribe if you'd like to, like this video if you'd like to, leave a tip if you'd like to, become a member, upgrade if you'd like to, and definitely leave a comment down below if you'd like to. Are you okay with Rutherford speaking to the media as he does? What's your score prediction and who's the first Canucks goal scorer? Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Have a fabulous day. God bless and go Canucks go.